Hello. Beep, 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 beep. How you doing? Good peeps. <laughs> Tis I, the jester. Ah, right, okay, another day, another dollar. Right, here we go. What have we got for you today? Well, let's talk about criminality. Them criminals. Them criminals, right? But let's talk about criminality generally in terms of trans criminality, right? Because I this comes up all the time and people sometimes go, where's that from? Where'd you get that from? Right, so I, I'm going to put this down in the Dubris as usual, right? So you've got it. So you can see the image and then I'll find the link and add the link as well. So you've also got that. So before we do that, become a warrior teacher, buy me a coffee, the usual. YouTube's demonetised me. We're starting on June the 19th. Come on! Where are you? It's going to be great. <laughs> WhatsApp group is buzzing already. These are good people. We've got some warrior teachers standing to be members of Parliament. Go warrior teachers, I say. Go warrior teachers. So I want to talk to you about criminality because... People always say, you know, oh, trans women, they're the most oppressed people in the world. They're this, they're that, that's other. Right. OK, well, I'm afraid that the figures don't agree with you whatsoever. Now, we've known about this, right, that if somebody's got a paraphilia or fetish, the likelihood is that they'll have more paraphilias or fetishes. Right. So we know that that's the thing. We've always known it. You go back as far as you like. So this is why, for example, in the 1970s, when John Hopkins realised how horrific this nonsense was and stopped it completely, that you had films pop up like Dress to Kill by Cocaine. If anybody asks, that, can you see up there, look, just look carefully. There is a set of black glasses and a razor blade, an old cutthroat razor. You know, the Sweeney Todd type. That's dressed to kill. That's what that's meant to represent, right? Because that's what Bobby wore when he went on his murderous rampage and chopped up the wonderful Angie Dickinson in a lift. <laughs> that outraged the public like nobody's business. Dressed to kill knew that there was a connection between between trans identities and criminality, he knew, right? Because Brian, Brian De Palmer looked at what John Hopkins had to say. Then again, you got Jonathan Demme in the 90s, did Science of the Lounge, remember that? <laughs> it puts the lotion on the skin or it gets the hose again. You know, it's all that kind of stuff. That's not to say that everybody is. Every cross-dresser is like that. They're not, right? But the idea of the gentle, you know, put-upon bloke in a wig is not something that you should take very seriously. It doesn't mean that every single person that identifies as trans is a bloody criminal. Like every gay person isn't a criminal. Every straight person isn't a criminal. But the figures, they tell us something completely different. Now, these figures were attained, obtained, obtained, obtained by the Ministry of, from the Ministry of Justice 2020 data by the marvellous Fair Play for Women. There they are, the Fair Play for Women, right? So they got these, it says here. The question of whether trans women match male or female patterns of criminality is specifically addressed by the 2020 Freedom of Information referenced by Fair Play for, for Women who have submitted evidence to the committee. This was to a committee investigating this particular thing in government. This is the first time there's been official data to compare the rate of sex offending in three different groups. Men versus women versus trans women. This sounds insane, doesn't it? Because, you know. The hyperlinks below link to the Freedom of Information spreadsheet. So they've got the information down there. This is, this is official information, right? It's official. OK, so here we go. Ministry of Justice stats show 76 of the 129 male-born prisoners identifying as transgender, not counting any with GRCs, gender recognition certificates, have at least one conviction of sexual offence. This includes 36 convictions for rape and 10 for attempted rape. These are clearly male type crimes. Rape is defined as penetration with a penis. Comparisons of official, comparisons of official MOJ statistics from March to April 2019. So that's only up to 2019. It takes a long time for these figures to get out. This is the, the latest official count of transgender prisoners says that 76 sex offenders out of 129 trans women. 76 sex offenders out of 129 trans women. That's 58.9%. 58.9% of the trans women in prison are there for sex offences. Do you want to hear it again? Just to make sure you got it. 58.9%. One 
125 sex offenders out of 3,812 women in prison is 3.3%. That's all, 3.3%. It's not a female thing, is it, generally? It's, you know. There are 1,000, sorry, 13,234 sex offenders out of 78,781 men in prison. And that equals 16.8%. That give you give you food for thought, does it? I wonder whether it might. It's incredible. So, nearly sixty percent of people who are sex offenders and identifying as trans, sixty percent have a sex offence. What's going on there? What do you make of these figures? This is good stuff, you know. You you you've got these kind of figures. You want to give people information, this is a good place to start. I know it peaked at least once in my, one, one of my friends. But something's wrong. Something's very wrong indeed. But I'll leave you to mull over what, because this will continue until we stop it. All right, become a warrior teacher. Come on, I'll see you later. Ta-da!